Hey guys, Canal Bulls on Wall Street. Let's talk today about stop losses. I get so tired of hearing this. It's nuts. You know, I get hundreds of students every month to come into the program and most traders, right, they've heard all these urban legends. So today, I'm talking to one of my favorite students, Ryan. Funny little fucker. And he's been trading really well. Gone through our 60 day boot camp. Went through the whole program. Did his homework, quizzes, and he's just great. And he's got this issue with stop losses. And everybody always asks me about stop losses. Should I use them or should I not? So Ryan got smoked on this trade and he's been doing really good. And the beauty of all trading, this is how it works. You can make a little money every day and you're doing great. You're not using your stop loss, you're trading free. You're sashaying around like a Turkish gypsy. And it's fantastic. And then one day, a trade gets away from you, right? Gets away from you. You wanted to only risk 50 cents. It turns to a dollar, turns into two. You average down, turns to three. Right, at some point, bad things happen. So I said, Ryan, you've gone through class. You're like my favorite, one of my best students. You're so smart. What happened here? Like we have, you know, he's trading live now. And we have $200 risk per trade. It's a thousand dollar loss. You just gave like seven days worth of profits. He says, well, you know, it got away from me and then I, you know, was holding for next level support. So what happened to your stop loss? I said, well, I didn't use it. You know, I didn't want the market makers to take it. So I get this question all the time. Like, I get this answer all the time. I don't use the stop losses. I don't want the market makers to see it and take my shares. I said, Ryan, let's just use this in common sense terms. You know, if you're trading Netflix, for example, you know, Netflix does say 20, 30 million shares a day in volume. So, you know, multi-billion dollar company, hundred billion dollar company. I said, Ryan, what are the odds that somebody moves the market and this hundred billion dollar company to steal your 50 shares and stop you up. So who's gonna move a whole stock down to take your stop loss out? The stock has a range, right? And it supports or the support. But who's gonna, if you put your stop loss in the right place, who's gonna move the whole market down for your 50 shares? Right? Like, let's just say, if we're thinking about that in logical terms. So that's the answer I get all the time. I don't want to use the stop losses because the market makers will take me out. Most of us are retail traders. You know, a lot of these, you know, big name stocks, we're trading a handful of hundred shares or whatever, thousand shares. Nobody's gonna move the market, take your stop loss out. The second part is everything is electronic these days. You know, like when I started trading, there was physical market makers in an office, like dudes with glasses with ties, with the button up short sleeve shirts, mustaches, drinking coffee, pocket protectors, and they're sitting there trying to match orders because that's how you made the market. Or you were on a floor like a New York Stock Exchange, right? People are saying, I got 200, I got 500, and they're making a market. The NASDAQ is electronic. ARCA, another exchange, these are electronic exchanges. Like there's not somebody sitting on the floor for Tesla stock, calling another guy trying to make the market. So nobody's gonna move around the stock for your handful of shares ever. So you use the stop losses. Now, what kind of stop losses do you wanna use? That's the big thing. So we've already, you gotta use them, by the way. And I always give an example to all my students when we talk about stop losses. I say, if you've ever let a trade just get away from you where you broke all your rules and all your sanity, threw it out of the window, then you need the stop loss. Even if there's a magical unicorn market maker who's going to manipulate the $20 trillion US stock market to get your stop, to get your stock, 
and you lose 100 bucks or 200 bucks on the trade, isn't that better than losing your whole account or losing half your account or 25% of your account because you let a trade get away from you that just turned into a nightmare? See, the whole purpose of stop losses is not necessarily just about that individual trade. It's about that risk protection of preventing yourself from the nightmare scenario. My three worst days trading ever, I basically lost my whole account every single one of those days. Like is like stock gets away from you, you start adding, you go on margin, so now like every loss is twice as magnified and it just goes away from you. Look, I'm not a, a degenerate gambler. I mean, I am in a way, but and I'm not a degenerate, I don't think. And those three mistakes are out of hundreds of thousands of trades, but they cost me so much money. So three trades out of hundreds of thousands I've taken over the last 15 years of trading in the market, cost me so much money, so much pain, so much time to get back. If I had just taken a thousand dollar loss in each of those three trades instead of what I took, right? How would that year have been different? How would my mentality of that particular year have been different? So the big part of the stop loss is for that nightmare scenario too. See, when you put in a stop loss, it's a physical order, but it takes the thinking out of the trade. When you're sitting there with your hand on the mouse and you're sweating and it's getting all greasy and you're like rubbing it to make sure you got traction on the mouse and you're coming in there, right? And you're like, okay, am I gonna hit it now? Oh, I'm gonna give it 20 more cents. Oh, I'm gonna give it five more cents. I'm gonna give it two more cents. And then it just keeps going down. You're like, oh, I'm gonna give it 20 more cents. Then it's like, it goes away from, I'm gonna give it more cents. I'm gonna give it five more minutes. No, 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 I'm gonna wait till lunch. It always bounces at lunch. You, oh, let me check these message boards. Let me te check Twitter. Before you know it, you're rationalizing, you're dipsy doing dunkaroo, that stock's gotten away from you. The stop loss just takes the emotion out of it. Even if there's a magical Turkish gypsy unicorn with a faux mustache, Orlando Bloom status, that's coming in on flying wings to take your 100 shares and move the market, which is not gonna happen, but if there was, isn't that still better than the nightmare scenario of going through that one moment where you froze and you are only gonna lose like 10, 20 cents on a stock and it got away from you. And when it gets away from you, like I know this for a fact, for at least me personally, if I let a stock, say I have a dollar stop loss, in my head and I let it get to two, yeah, I'm gonna let it get to three. If I let it get three, I'm gonna let it get to five. I'm gonna let it get to, then at that point, it's like all, all my knowledge, all my experience, everything is thrown out the window. I'm not canal the trader anymore, right? I'm hoping and praying. And hope is a terrible strategy in trading. You can do the pull and pray every blue moon. But you can't do it often, especially in trading and right also in your dating life. So use the stop losses. Guys, if you have any questions on stop losses or risk management, hit me up. I love talking to you guys. You can email me, K-U-N-A-L at B-U-L-L-S-O-N.W-S. Or you can always just give me a text on my phone, 517-974-1480. That's my cell. Don't be telling your people about it. Smash that like button. Guys, have some fun. Protect your wrist. Do those stop losses. I'm telling you, it's going to help you. Take care.